QuickBooks Online 2024 1099 reports. Get ready because we don't just do data input, we get totally into it within two its QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left-hand side in the favorites. We're going to be right-clicking on the balance sheet. Open link in the new tab. Right-click on the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Open link in new tab. Let's go up to that middle tab that we opened up. Close the hamburger. Change the range, bringing it back to 2-3. We're going to go from 01, 01, 2, 3 tab. 12, 31, 2, 3 tab run it to refresh it first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our cpa six pack shirts a must have for any pool or beach time mixing money with muscle always sure to attract attention yeah even if you're not a cpa you need this shirt so you can like pull in that iconic cpa six-pack stomach muscle vibe man you know that cpa six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think cpa yeah as a cpa i actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs however i was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair, too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six-pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com and then we'll tab to the right and close up the hamburger. Same thing, bringing it back to 2023, going from 010123 tab, 123123 tab, run it to refresh it. That's the setup process that we do every time. These are the major two financial statement reports, balance sheet, income statement, otherwise known as the profit and loss report. All other reports, for the most part, providing more detail, more information on one or multiple line items of these main two reports. We're now going to look at the 1099 reports. And as we do that, we're also going to go through a quick overview of basically the 1099 process. Now, it's changed recently within QuickBooks, so we have some old vestiges of basically the old system that we had, and then we have kind of the new system that is in place. So I'll first locate everything. So we have a few 1099 reports that are currently still in the system. We actually have the old location of the 1099 area, which was under the taxes over here, and then you have the 1099 filing, but the new location now for the 1099s is generally going to be in its own section, which you can find under the vendor section or the expenses over here, expense center or vendor center. And then we have the contractors. And you can also find that same area under the payroll area. And then we have the contractors. And then on the reports side of things, if I go into the reports, we have still in here the 1099 reports, three reports if you just type them up top. You got the transaction detail report, the contractor balance summary, and the contractor balance uh, detail. These reports might be somewhat obsolete going forward given the fact that you're in essence going to have a report that will be generated once you go through the new kind of widget or portal in the 1090 for the 1099 news center but let's just locate these reports so you can see where they are if i scroll down we saw them before and i promised i would go back to them here's the what you owe so this is a 1099 report for the for the contractor balance detail here's a 1099 report for uh the summary of it so if i right click and open that one 
I'm going to right click and open this one. And then down here, we've got the 1099 transaction detail report, which might be more of what we possibly are looking for because usually we're looking for what we paid to the contractors within the time frame. So let's just look at those three reports. I'll uh, close the hamburger and do a custom date range going from 010123 tab, 123123 tab, running it. So this is the con uh, the 1099 contractor balance detail might not be as uh, important with regards to your 1099 preparation, given the fact that the 1099 preparation is generally in the United States, it's a tax kind of thing that we have to deal with. And it's generally going to be dealing with things that we paid to the contractors, which I'll define a little bit more detail shortly. And so this is what we owe them, not what we in essence paid them through the time frame. If I go to the next one, this is going to be a custom date. And I go from 010123 tab, 123123 tab. So again, this is the balance of what we owe them at this point in time, which might not be exactly what we're looking for when we're trying to make our 1099s. And the last one, if I go over here and make a custom report going from 010123 tab, 123123 tab, this one gives the transactions for the time period. It's a period report, which you would think would be closer to what we need to make the 1099s, but there's nothing currently in it. And again, I think that's partially because these are reports maybe designed more for like the old system and now we have kind of reports that are basically generated within the widget so i just want to point that out now what are the 1099s quick recap on what they are uh in the united states we ha we have an income tax so we have to pay our income taxes but the irs would also really like to have the employers as their tax collectors right they want to make the employers the business owners the people that do the IRS's work, right? They, they collect the taxes for the IRS. So that's why typically, uh, if you have people that you wanna hire for the business, you have a couple different options. One, you, could, you can hire them as an employee. However, if you hire them as an employee, then you're gonna have to deal with a lot of, of, uh, of regulations, including withholdings that you'll have to deal with, taking the money from your employee payroll tax withholdings, and then pay that to the government. You're acting as the government's tax collector in that case. You can try to have them as a contractor instead of an employee, but you must be careful in doing that because you want to make sure that they qualify as a contractor. And the IRS tries to put up rules to act like there's a big line between an employee and an employer, when in reality, it's somewhat of a gray area, right? And the IRS is leaning more generally to try to get people to have to record people as employees because then they can make the employer collect the taxes for them they make them into the tax collector so if you if you hire someone as a contractor though then that would mean that they have generally the rules to do that hover around the idea that the contractor has more independence they're not in the office you're not directing them like every every hour, for example, that would clearly be an employee if you're telling them what to do, giving them all the resources to do it. However, if you're giving a job for someone to do and you're, you're not you're not managing them, them every step along the way, possibly then they can be a contractor, in which case you don't have to issue a 1099. Uh, I mean, sorry, you don't have to issue a W-2, but the IRS would still like a 1099, which means you're kind of spared the withholding pain of the payroll uh, system, but the IRS still wants you to kind of, I would, th I would think of it in, in derogatory terms, ratting out, you know, the, your contractors to the IRS to say, hey, look, they've earned this money. I'm not gonna take the money from them directly because you didn't make me government, but here's, here's where their address, here's their social security number or EIN number, you go after them, IRS. And so that's gonna be the, the, the general idea. So when, that means that it's going to be people that we paid money to, which means on the income statement, we, we're got, we've got information that's related to the expense accounts usually, because when we pay for things, they are expenses. Now, most of the things we pay for, however, we pay to people or corporations. If the, govern, if the entity we pay to is incorporated, like we pay our Edison bill, utility bill, the normal kind of expenses to the big businesses out there, 
then we don't typically have to worry about 1099s because we only have to give them out to people that are, are sole proprietors or who are uh, not incorporated. So that's the ones that, th those are the vendors that we're looking for. We're looking for the ones that are not incorporated, the little guys, that's the one, because the big guys, the government already feels like they've got them under their thumb, right? The government's like, we've got them, no worries. We're, we're gonna take their money. We've, and they're, but the little guy might fly under the radar. So the IRS wants you to, to make sure that you get that guy and tell them the social security number and whatnot uh, that, that the person that worked for you. So if you hire a contractor as a sole proprietor, then whenever you do that, you wanna try to get their information so that you can do your 1099 thing. Now, what if you don't? What if you don't do it? Well, then the IRS w could charge you penalties and interest, right? They hit you with the stick if you don't do that, right? So that you have to be in compliance. That's the idea. Okay, so that's the general, the general idea. So these reports, it, I believe now it's becoming that you have to basically file electronically. So as technology gets better, a as we can see, we can do the in data input more easily. QuickBooks is amazing, right? And our reports that we can do and everything. But obviously what's gonna happen from the government standpoint, they're gonna want more information. They're gonna want more control. So now the IRS wants more information. They want a r digital process possibly of, of, the, of the information that goes to them. So you might still be able to do that outside of QuickBooks or within QuickBooks. You might have to pay for it no matter what you do possibly. So you can kind of shop around to see what the best deal would be. But obviously you're gonna get the information from QuickBooks if you're using QuickBooks to do your bookkeeping. So the general idea would be then when, when you take on new vendors, if I go into my expenses area here, and this is my vendor center, when we take on new vendors that are not incorporated, we hire contractors, then you wanna make sure that when you set them up, you set them up as a contractor that you're tracking for 1099s so you can easily issue the 1099s. Couple ways you can do that. Uh, the old way that we used to, that you could still do, I believe, is you can go into the vendor up top and we can say if we're adding a new vendor, let's say this is vendor number one, vendor one. Now, if, we're, if they're a contractor, we're typically going to want an email. So let's say it's test uh, email at, let's say at gmail, gmail.com. Uh, we're going to typically want their phone number, 909-222-222. And then uh, we're, we've got their contact information. And then we want their address. I'm just going to pick one in Beverly Hills, 353 South Reeves drive south uh reeves drive uh unit 202 let's say this is going to be in uh we're going to say beverly hills beverly hills california and 90210 I wanted to be maybe it wasn't but there it is i don't know exactly the county well we'll keep it with that and then if i scroll down i think it's los angeles so i'll put los angeles so we're gonna if you issue the 1099 then remember you're basically ratting out the person to the irs so the irs can go after them for income taxes so the irs wants to know who they are name they want to know their address you probably want to have their phone number so you can contact them in case there's any issues with this information so you don't get hit by the irs and then their their taxes they might have either a social security number hopefully when you're dealing with a contractor they will have an ein number even if they're a sole proprietorship and they don't have any employees they could get an ein number if they don't want to give you their number because it's their social security number then you probably don't want to do business with them right because you can't you, you won't be able to fulfill your obligations and therefore you're leaving yourself at risk to the to the irs so usually the 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 business id number is usually pretty easy to get uh on the irs website even if you're like a sole proprietorship so so you probably want to be working with people that have the, have something like a 99 dash number as opposed to the social security number but if they want to give you the social security number and you want to work with them then that's fine too but if they refuse to give you any number because they don't want to give you the social security number then you might not want to do business with them because 
you're not going to be able to meet your obligations for the 1099s, and that means you're putting yourself at risk on the, for, for the IRS side of things. So then if I do that, that's one way we can add, add the vendor. We checked off that we have the 1099. Now, the other thing we can do is if I go to this contractors tab, so now this is, this is the area where we, can, where, where we can pick up the information from the contractor. Now, we could issue the contractor basically a W-9. That's going to be one way that we can request this information that we need. Uh, and you can possibly do that uh, within QuickBooks now by uh, adding a contractor and then we have the name and the email and it says email this contractor to, com to complete their profile. They'll get their own account to safely share their personal details. So this is the other way that you can invite a contractor. You, you could say, okay, we, we use QuickBooks. I'm going to give me your name and your email address and I'm going to send you out the information and then they're going to have basically their own little portal on their side that they can open uh, and and uh, deal with their contractor, which might be useful because they might be able to deal with other contractors that use uh, QuickBooks as well or contract with other businesses that use QuickBooks to kind of manage uh, that kind of information. So this is the other way that we can get that information. Now, if you want to look at a, 10, at a W-9 form from the IRS, you can go to irs.gov, irs.gov, and simply type in W-9. So we'll type in a W-9, and here's the W-9 form. So we have the name as shown on your income tax return because this is information related to their uh, income tax that we're ratting them out to the IRS. We need their name, business name, disregarded entity name if different from above. Check the appropriate box for the federal tax classification as the person whose name is entered in line one. Check only one of the following seven boxes. So are they the individual sole proprietor or single member LLC, a C corporation, S corporation, partnership, trust? Usually you're going to have people that are going to be on this first box that you're going to be dealing with because usually those are the people that you're required to give the 1099 to oftentimes. So then we have the limited liability company, other then we have the address down below, city, state, list account number, uh, list account number here and uh, requester's name and address, which is optional. We have the taxpayer's identification number. This is the TIN, which you can see could either be the social security number or the employer identification number. So pretty, pretty basic form doesn't have too much involved with it, but you can see those are the basics that we basically put into the system uh, when we have a new vendor. You're going to need that basic information because that's what the IRS is going to want for you to issue the 1099. So within this widget window, then we're going to have the list of contractors that we have basically ticked off that 1099 box or we added them from the add a contractor area. We can sort and filter the contractors here. We can take actions such as looking for active, inactive, or all of the contractors. The contractors that are inactive will typically not be showing up uh, by default because they've been made to be uh, inactive. Then we've got the prepare 1099s, which we'll take a look at in a second. We saw that we had the add a contractor, which is the one way or one of the ways that we can add a new contractor by giving them basically an email so they can fill out that information. We can pay the contractors this way. If we go into here, we can pay it in a similar process as we do with the payroll. However, uh, a lot of people, I think, might not be doing that. So if you're not doing that, I don't believe that you have to worry because you're not really required to do this whole separate system to pay the contractors in a similar way as you would with the payroll. That would be added if it's possibly convenient for you to do. I would think that a lot of people would probably still be paying your contractors using the standard form like a check form or possibly an expense form like they pay most of their vendors, right? It's going through the vendor section you're paying them and possibly adding it as an expense form when you're doing uh the bank the bank feeds for example so the contractors have not become so tedious yet by the irs adding a bunch of rules and whatnot that we have to kind of pay it in a separate whole nother widget as we do with the payroll although again i would think that the irs would like that to be the case and possibly uh is trying to work towards 
uh, that being the case, so that so that uh, they could possibly have you collect on the 1099s as well. But we'll see what happens in the future. In any case, then we would prepare the 1099s, and so we have this one that says uh, file 1099s with a head start. So let's wrap your uh, let's wrap up your 1099 miss and 1099 NEC. These are the two major. 1099 forms. We'll take a look at them uh, in a second. These are informational forms, the reporting forms. The miscellaneous used to be the main one, but now they broke out the box that we used to use in the miscellaneous to the NEC, which is now the main one. By the way, also, I believe this still stands for miscellaneous, M-I-S-C. Uh, but when you look at the recordings from QuickBooks Online, when they talk about the 1099 MISC, they pronounce it 1099 MISC. They pronounce the C, which is kind of funny. I don't know why that is because I think it still stands for miscellaneous and the C is silent. I'm thinking possibly it's a gender thing. They don't want to call it Miss 1099. Like if it doesn't want to identify as a Miss or something. I don't know. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. It's a crazy world these days. But I still think the C is silent. But in any case, you can pronounce it either way. 1099 Miss, 1099 MISC. This is the main one now, 1099 NEC, oftentimes for small businesses. So you'll have the option to print and mail the form or have us file online with the IRS and send digital and paper copies to your contractors and vendors. So in other words, you, you could try to file whichever way that you want to file the 1099s. That's a, that's a available way to you uh, provided by the IRS regulations and you might get the information from QuickBooks and then use that to file the 1099s in whichever way that you think would be best for you or you can transfer it and totally file it through the QuickBooks which means you might have to pay more or not it'll depend on the level of subscription uh, that you have also note that 1099s we're usually thinking about the federal 1099 forms here sometimes some states might also require a 1099 form but that will be dependent upon the state that you are in and because the states are all different, like with the payroll, in this case, QuickBooks might have the ability then to allow you to process the state returns, but some states might not have that compatibility. They might want you to process it on their website or something like that. So if you are required to file state 1099s, then again, you can probably get the information here and you may be able to use QuickBooks, but you have to look into that process depending on where you're located. So January 1st to May 7th, online filing is available. January 15th, uh, last day uh, for early bird discount, January 28th at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, last day to send taxpayers copies on time. So then we have the company information down below, which is required. They will not let us go forward from here because we don't have the tax identification number and they won't let us put that in place. So I'm gonna go into another file so that we can move forward from here. Okay, so the next step looks like this. It says select accounts used to pay contractors and vendors. So you'll show uh, your list uh, of your accounts so you select the ones you used in 2023, then you'll categorize those accounts by assigning them a box from Form 1099 form. So we can run reports of accounts used to pay 1099 vendors, run reports of all vendor uh, payments. So if I open, I'm gonna right click on this report and open in a new tab. So if I open that over here, uh, it looks like this. So this gives us a report which this looks like the new and improved uh, report, right? Other than the last reports that are currently in the report center. Now notice that this one is filtered by the 1099s already. You can see the filters over here. So if you're trying to look through all of your vendors to see if you oh, if you need to mark them off as 1099s, you could use this report and, and just delete this filter and then look at all your payments, although it gives you a lot of detail. So, uh, so let me just, point out that if you don't know, if you if you don't know, you didn't mark off the people that you might need to ten, send a 1099 to, then you've got to comb through your vendors and figure that out. And let's just go through a few options you might use to do that. I'll go back to the test drive file over here. Uh, so you could like if I go into my my expenses area in my vendors, then you could go through basically your vendor list here and try to figure out which of these vendors you need to issue a 1099 to. You're looking for the ones that are are not incorporated basically. 
that you need to basically then add and that's going to be that that's the general idea now there's also a dollar limit which is fairly low it's like six hundred dollars so you're but basically when you mark them off in this area you want to mark off all of the ones that you would have to give a 1099 to if they were over the limit by checking off that box getting their email address getting their phone number and getting their address and their uh their ein or social security number for those vendors now if you have a very long list of vendors or if you want to look at the balances that you paid the vendors as well the reports that you might want to go to is like for example we saw this report down here for the expenses and vendors and we saw the uh, expense by vendor summary so expense by vendor summary if i open that up then now we've got at least the expense accounts that we posted payments to and i'll change the date to custom date from 0101231233 tab and this might make it a little bit more easy if you have a whole lot of, like some people might have tons of vendors that you did business with over the last 20 years that you've been using quickbooks or something but you don't have actual balances that you paid to them in the current year so if you run something like this at least now you can see the people that you actually paid which might be a smaller list and then you can go through this list and try to see if these particular vendors are uh, are incorporated or not and if they're not then you can look into trying to get the information from them that you might need to file a 1099 which would be sending them that form if you can uh, or a w-9 form to get the information and then going forward what you want to do every time you add a new vendor is to make sure that if, if they're not incorporated you pick up that information up front and if you can't get it you typically don't do business with the vendor because it'll be like your head on the chopping block at that point so in any case if we go back on over here we're going to say select account okay so we did that so then we so now we can select the accounts that we're so that we're going to have 1099s going to so if i go into uh this report it says select accounts used to make payments to vendors and contractors run report of the chart of accounts used a uh, run report of all vendors paid so you could go through here and think about oftentimes when you pay like a contractor for many small businesses at least it might be always going to one particular account that you're paying like contractor payable or contractor expense or something like that that you're paying it to but it's possible that you might be paying contractors that you're charging to a bunch of different accounts depending on the industry that you are in so so y you would like to basically usually select more accounts than than possibly you're actually charging to what you don't want to do is miss the account that you actually paid through because if you do that then you didn't you didn't issue the proper 1099 and that can cause you problems so you, the, the easiest thing to do is you can select all the accounts right and then any payment you made to a contractor uh would would then be picked up because now no matter what account it went to if you paid it to them then it would be picked up so that's kind of what i'm going to do here but in practice you probably you could probably be more specific in practice picking the 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 accounts that are going to be charged to with a particular contractor but on the test i want to make sure i pick the account that was with the contractor test contractor that i made so i'm just going to add them here the whole thing to make sure that i have the one i want that was a lot okay i'm going to add them so there so there they are now if you have them in this list already then of course you can you can go through this list and delete any ones that you don't think should be in this list and you can continue to add them from here if you need to so now we need to assign the 1099 box that will be selected so remember this widget is mainly for the two 1099s which are going to be the 1099 uh, miscellaneous which looks like this now this one and then the 1099 let's take a look at this one first nec the 1099 nec is now kind of the most common one for like general contractors and usually you're going to have box one populated which is the non-employee compensation which is the typical uh 1099 for many people you might have the federal income tax withheld if they, there was withholdings 
but you might not be required to do withholdings if they're a contractor as opposed to an, an employee. That's kind of one of the benefits of not having them as an employee <laughs> and, and doing their contractor. They could pay their own taxes with it so you can just you know, pay them their normal fee. If you go into the miscellaneous, then what's left in the miscellaneous is all this other stuff. So you got the rents, royalties, other income, which now again might more often be over here for non employee compensation, which before might have been in other income. So you want to check to make sure that you're in the right box there. And then federal income tax withheld, if there was any, fishing boat. Uh, medical and health care, we, we've got the payer made direct sales totaling 5000 or more, and so on and so forth. So the main one usually is going to be like rents and royalties are, are usually what this form is going to be for. So then we can assign these if I look at the boxes, then we've got uh, the rents that's for the 1099 miscellaneous, most of them are going to be are going to be non employee compensation. So if so, I'm just going to use the general concept if you are a small business and you're paying contractors as opposed to having the employees you're probably going to be using the ne the 1099 nec and putting them all in here unless you have like rents uh or or royalties so that's gonna so i'm gonna put them all to that box one of the nec as a general rule if you have a more complex situation you're gonna have to dig down dig down into it a bit but here's the general idea Okay, so I've added all those. I'm going to say next now. So the next one says we have uh, the review payments. So review rec uh, recipients and payments total. We pre-selected contractors and vendors uh, you've been keeping track for, of for 1099s and who meet the IRS threshold for reportable payments in 2023. Review the list of folks you didn't track for 1099s to make sure no one was left out. So in other words, this is kind of like the report that uh, QuickBooks has basically whittled down, meaning they basically just took all the ones that you checked off as being necessary to issue a 1099 to by issuing them the email or by ticking off that box saying that they need to be issued a 1099 and they had payments over $600, right? So that's who's showing here. Now, if you hit the drop down, you could say non reportable payments only. So this is the one, one person or one, and I know these are companies that I've checked off here as an example. So obviously AAA and Costco would not be people that we would be issuing a 1099 to, but these are just examples. So I could show you as it flows through here, it would be a sole proprietor that would have it. But in any case, so on this one, we ticked off the box, meaning we ticked it off that they need to be issued a 1099, but the dollar amount was under the threshold and therefore we don't have to issue them a 1099. So let's go back to the first one. So there, and then this one says not tracked for 1099. So these are all the vendors that we didn't check off the box for or send the W9 form either electronically or whatever to, to the, so the box isn't checked off. So we're gonna say, all right, that's the only one we'll say for our, for our practice problem. So I'm gonna say next then. So now we have the information for the total of the uh, NECs, which is what I put it for. That's one of, the one of the forms, the 1099 versus none for the miscellaneous. By the way, if you're, if you're doing this outside of QuickBooks, you're using QuickBooks to gather the information and then filing using some other software, then this is basically where you can get the information that you can then populate into whatever other so whatever you're using to file the 1099s. So here's, but here's the information here. So the preview of the forms, and then we can continue next uh, to see if we can process the forms through QuickBooks. And then of course you come to the payment screen. So the payment information will be dependent in part on, you know, what subscription model that you have, whether it be included or not. But just as general rule, you've got, how would you like to file? Please select an option to proceed with e-file. So you got the contractor payments, pay contractors with next day direct deposit, uh, e-file unlimited, 1099 uh, and stay ready for tax time. This is $15 a month. So I'm not sure if that would be worthwhile or not. I mean, it kind of depends on how many contractors you have because that's a monthly payment of the $15 a month. So unlimited direct deposit, for your 20 contractors plus $2 per additional contractor, 1099 e-filing included. 
So if you if you have that again, it's it's fifteen dollars. So you would think, I would assume that you would have a decent amount of contractors that you're trying to manage in a similar way as you manage the payroll to make that a, a worthwhile thing to do. However, if you're a small business, you don't have that many contractors, and if you're not paying them like you do basically through payroll with direct deposit and whatnot, then you would think it might be more reasonable to simply use what QuickBooks comes up with to either then use whatever cheapest filing system that you could file your returns with or file with QuickBooks possibly with a one-time fee. So you'll, you'll fill out the form and file online with the IRS uh, on your behalf. So that's the three ninety nine. That's probably what I would go for. But in any case, so, but again, if you have a lot of contractors, maybe over here. But the point of the ten ninety nines is that it's not payroll yet. It's not that difficult. So, so I would think, uh, you, you know, it might get there to to where the IRS will require withholdings and whatnot. And possibly, if you have complex things going on, it might be more complex. But again, uh, y y the one time fee here, or you can possibly pay with another or you could possibly use this information to process with another uh, system so note that this widget is kind of the all-in-one area so we talked before about the three forms that are 1099 forms those seem to be somewhat of old vestiges from the prior system maybe not be as useful currently because everything's kind of housed in this widget uh, and then we had, again, that old vestige of where it used to be under the tax system, where now they're kind of linking it to the concept of payroll and putting it under payroll and in the vendor uh, area. So that's the general idea with the 1099s.